Hey everyone, it's time for some Xenos filth in the form of a Gene Stealer Patriarch. I'm going to show you how I painted this model, just dry brushing and washing. And I'll talk a bit about how I came up with the paint scheme and how I'm implementing it without first painting a test model. Here he is in all his glory. This miniature is so cool and brutal and I had a lot of fun painting him. I wanted to see if I could paint a nasty tyrannid form of Quetzalcoatl the Aztec serpent god. If you look for images online, you can see that he is depicted as a green serpent and often with a yellow or a tan belly. Kind of like a crocodile. And I figured a tyranny that looks like a crocodile would be pretty cool. But instead of the vibrant colors that you usually see in fan artwork of the Aztecs, I wanted to go for a more muted and natural palette. A full list of all the paints I used in this video is in the description below, so check that out if you want to see what I used. Now as usual, I primed the miniature with black and I gave it a zenithal highlight with white primer. I then dry brushed the armor plating with death core drab. This is a desaturated dark olive grey green color and it's a great starting point for any muted green paint scheme. This is what he looks like after the first dry brush. Then I dry brush the edges of the armor with iron rack skin. This is a bone color but with a slightly desaturated greenish tint. And it's perfect to give highlights to the dark green armor plates and will make it look bony at the same time. Here's what he looks like after that second dry brush. So now I wash the armor plates with Athonian camo shade. This is a desaturated green wash and it's perfect to blend the two base layers together. It will still leave some of the dusty streaky that you get when you dry brush and that's exactly what I want. I want this to look like rough bone because that will contrast nicely later on with the smoother skin. The wash takes a while to dry so I'm going to do the base layer of the pipe that this Gene Stealer Patriarch is standing on. I just cover it all in typhus corrosion, but I dab it on rather than paint it on like you would with a normal paint. This is so that the little grains that are in this texture paint get spread randomly and you don't sweep them all into one place. Now that the wash is dry, it's time for the final highlight of the armor plates. I'm doing this with Praxiti White. This is a completely white dry brush paint and it's good for these final highlights to really make the edges pop. I'm just lightly, lightly dry brushing it on. I'm making sure I move the brush against the plates to only get it on the edges. This is what he looks like after dry brushing all the plates. And now it's time for the skin. And I'm doing this with Rock Art Flesh. This is again a desaturated paint that I really like when doing grimdark skin. This is the same paint that I used for the skin in my Grimdark Primaris Chaplin video, by the way. And this paint, it doesn't cover very well. So, you know, usually you would do two layers, but I want this to look blotchy. I don't want smooth skin on my Tyranid. So I'm just doing one layer and I'll cover it up later with some washes. So here's the Patriarch after all the skin is painted. I don't know exactly what color I want to do the claws and the ridge on his spine. But now that I have the other base colors done, I can experiment and try some paints. So I'm considering either red or black. And I'm starting with black on the front claws. And I immediately think that this is the right choice. It just clicks. The wet black paint looks amazing. So I'm going to stick with black. And I think that if I had gone red, the ridge on his back might have made him look too much like some terror chicken anyway. Here he is with all the major parts of the model painted in the base colors. I'm quite happy with how he's looking so far. But I'm gonna work on the pipe first though, because the rust requires dabbing and that is messy work which might mean that I get paint on the feet of the Patriarch. And it's much easier to just paint that over when I'm done with the pipe. So here I'm dabbing on Screamer Pink. This is to get some extra warm colors into the pipe. Then I'm dabbing on Mornfang Brown. 
This is a light brown color and I think this combined with a typhus corrosion is a perfect combination to make easy rust effects. Finally, I dab on some Ryza rust. This is a super bright orange, so you have to slowly build it up and don't work too fast. As you can see, I keep moving the model around and dabbing on the paint lightly. I also make some dry brushing motions to make sure that the bright orange gets on the edges. This gives it a bit of a highlight while still making it look naturally rusted through. So it's time to work on the gene stealer again. First, I'm shading the skin with Seraphim Sepia. I'm doing this because I still want to get a bit closer to the look of Quetzalcoatl with his yellow belly. The yellow in the Seraphim Sepia is great for this and it gives the skin a bit of shade too. Here is what he looks after the wash. The wash on the skin needs to dry, so I'm going to experiment a bit with the brain. I think that a bluish tint would be good here, so I'm giving it a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade. However, after I'm done with it, I think it's too dark, and so I'm going to fix this later. Both the washes still need to dry, so I'm going to paint the skulls and the webs on the base for a bit. I'm using Screaming Skull for both of these things. The paint really doesn't cover well, so by brushing out very lightly on the cobwebs, you apparently get a decent web effect. I give the actual bones two layers though. Now like I said, I want to make the brain much brighter, so I'm painting it completely white. This is the same Praxiti white that I used to dry brush, but I water it down just enough to be able to brush it on. I only use one layer here because I figured that would cover it enough and the wash that I used before had seeped in the recesses where it could stay fine with me. While the brain is drying, I'm going all over the skin with Karoberg Crimson. I didn't really like the yellowish tint and I didn't think it was a good enough contrast with the green armor plates. This reddish wash will make it look more brown and I think it makes it look more gross too. So here he is with the skin done. And now it's time for the Space Marine helmet that he holds in his hand. And as you can see, I managed to turn the model exactly in such a way that you can't see me paint it. I'm sorry, it happens. I'm still starting with this YouTube channel. I'm using Contour Blue, by the way, to make him look like an ultramarine. Now for the shade on the brain. I'm going over the white again with the Drakenhof Nightshade. This is the same blue shade I used before, but because the underlying layer is now white, the effect is much stronger. I go over the side where he touches his brain with his claw only once, and I go over the other side twice. This is to simulate more brain activity where he is poking his brain with his claw. I just want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to my lovely patrons. Your support makes this channel possible. If you like this video so far, then you can support me too by giving it a like. That would really help me out. And you can find links to my website, Instagram, Facebook, and of course Patreon in the description below. Now here we go. He is starting to look nasty and lethal. I did his tongue in the same way as the brain to get that popping out a bit more as well. And now to finish the base, I'm going over the skulls with Seraphim Sepia. This will make the bones look nasty, old and dirty. Remember when I was painting the claws black and I said I liked the look of the wet paint? So I'm going to recreate that effect by painting over the nails with Art Coat, which is Games Workshop's gloss varnish. This will make them look shiny and almost like obsidian talons. I'm making a little jump forward in the steps that I took to show you that I painted the brain and the tongue with art coat as well. This will make them look wet and I think that effect is great. This way the model has a lot of different textures that contrast with each other. You have the rough pipe, dusty and bony armor plates, smooth skin and slick wet talons and the brain. This makes the model look a lot more interesting than if you keep it all the same texture. So time to finish up the model with some basing and blood effects. I'm starting with Sterland Mud and I cover the whole base in it. 
I also use this to smoothen the transition between the base and the pipe that it's on. Just smear some of the paint onto the pipe and you'll cover up the seam. I like to paint my miniatures as if they had at least seen a little bit of combat already. So it's time for blood effects. Here I'm dabbing on some corn red on the Space Marine helmet that he's holding and on the talons of his claws and the spike that's on his tail. I'm dabbing some on the ground as well. Then I go over the same spots that I did with corn red, but I'm using blood for the blood god now. This is a glossy red that will make it look like fresh blood is still dripping off his talons and tail. To finish the base, I just glued on some more rusty Space Marine shoulder pads and a helmet to fill out the base and I glued on some patches of scorched grass from Geek Gaming Scenics to finish it off. I covered some of the blood effects with this, but I went over it again with the same blood effect that I did before. Some corn red and some blood for the blood god. This was such a fun model to paint and I will definitely paint more Xenos in the future videos. I like the different textures that I can work with. There are wet parts, dusty parts, smooth parts, and it all makes the model look so much better if you can get different textures on the same miniature. I wanted to thank you for watching this video and please give it a like if you enjoyed this and leave a comment below if you want to see me paint a specific miniature in a certain paint scheme. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook and I have a Patreon page which you can support me through. Thanks for watching. See you next time.